Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this very interesting little knife here. This is the Wilson Combat Eagle uh, that is designed by Les George. First off, though, I want to thank my buddy Andrew for uh, sending this guy my way. He actually donated this to the channel in exchange for when I sell it, I'll have to give the money to charity, which in my opinion is win-win. So, Andrew, thank you so much for this donation. Next thing, let's do a size comparison, as always. Uh, first off, of course, your Ontario rat number one and your number two we can see this is not a small knife blades coming in at 3.6 inches holy crap so uh yeah right there there's the size spydeco delica chris reeve knives large freaking sabenza another knife in the same price range somehow and uh let's see here uh yeah, I think that ought to do it for size comparison. Um, then a little bit of background for you. Uh, Wilson Combat here, the uh, the, the the WC, uh, although not in the English meaning, is uh, well, uh, they are a purveyor of really really high end pistols. Uh, this is how you pay thirty five hundred bucks for a nineteen eleven or uh, something along those lines. And so that's the branding here. And in fact, Wilson Combat's done other collaborations with uh, knife makers, namely uh, Chris Reeve Knives has a uh, Star Benzer with their kind of trademarky starburst pattern um and so you can see here that this model has that same starburst sort of thing uh so uh there you go and then finally like i said this is a less george design and less george is a really well-known maker in the uh custom and production knife world and so you got to keep that in mind throughout this process so anyways let's go ahead and jump into the good the great the bad and the ugly of the uh wilson combat eagle here Okay, so on the good side, first off, um, this knife is made by Les George. Les George is a very well-known custom knife maker, and uh, according to some forum posts, the, these knives are actually being made in Les George's shop. I'll be honest, I'm not 100% sure I buy that, and we'll talk about some build issues a little bit later on there, but the thing is, if that is true, uh, that is a nice thing, because you, you, you know that your knife has been handled by a really, really high-end custom maker. Makes this maybe a little bit more mid-techy, small-batch production-y than a lot of your other uh, sorts of production knives. So, uh, if that's true, that's a beautiful thing. Next thing, I, I have no reason to believe it's not true. Just, I don't know, weird. Anyways, next thing, the ergonomics on this knife are very good. The design is 100% less, George, and I think it's a good design in a couple of ways. The ergos are very nice. Um, because it's a relatively tall knife, it doesn't matter that it's particularly thin. If you can have, if you have a very narrow, very thin knife, there's not that much to grip onto. But with this guy, it's pretty tall, and, you know, it feels good. I mean, yeah, the little proud liner here, yeah, a little hot spot, but, you know, overall, ergos are solid. So that's nice. Next thing, the Starburst pattern is very compelling. There's a reason that people collect the Sebenzas, Zubnum, Zons, whatever, that have the Starburst, and it's good to see it here again. It's kind of Wilson Combat's brand identity in the knife world, and so cool. There you go. Next thing, screws here. We got T8, T8, then T15. Um, It's kind of a weird thing to comment on, but if you look at these screws, they're nice and deep. They're nice and well done. I mean, these screws are screws that you can really trust. I'm done with T6, T5, T4, that kind of crap. Having a big old screw here, big old screws back here, beautiful freaking thing. They're a pleasure to work with. So there you go. You get two options for carry. You get a uh, tip up carry and you get a tip down carry. Uh, although then you get the flip a tab and whatnot, but whatever. Uh, so that's a nice thing. It is a knife that is running on washes. They are Teflon washes, but you know what? Any kind of washes are going to be a little more resilient in gritty, dusty conditions. So that can be a nice thing. And actually, despite being on Teflon, the action on this guy is pretty good when it's carefully dialed in. I mean, you really need to make sure that you're right in adjustment here. Because if it's too loose, you're going to have blade play. And if it's too tight, it's going to be, well, a very, very slow action. But the thing is, the detent is done so so well here, which makes me think, yeah, Les probably had something to do with it, um, that it does fire very reliably. I mean, with zero wrist action here, I'll stabilize my wrist, and you know what? It still fires. It's not a fast fire knife, um, but and it's certainly not dropping shut. Yeah, come on, you little... Yeah, there we go. I guess I got it for drop shot. But still, you know what? The action is reliable, and, and it's fine in that way. Then finally, um, on the good side, this guy is very, very thin. And that can be a beautiful thing in the pocket. I mean, seriously, thinness-wise, this is right around the same thickness as your Spydeco Delica, maybe a touch thicker. Um, we are thinner than 
For instance, your Chris Reeve knives Sabenza, way thinner than like your Ontario rat number one here. It's thin, and that can be a very nice thing for carry. It kind of disappears, although it's very wide. The thinness makes it disappear kind of in that dimension. So that's a beautiful thing, and that concludes the good here. It's uh, super thin, pretty lightweight. The action is very good with a very strong detent uh, if you've got it carefully dialed in despite the washes. It is on washes, uh, which is good for uh, overall resilience in dusty conditions. Tip up or tip down carry options. T8 and T15 screws are well done. Uh, Starburst pattern is a beautiful thing. The ergonomics are nice, and it is apparently made by Les George in his shop, and so, uh, well, that's it's nice. It's a smaller batch production sort of thing. Let's talk about what's great here. So, to me, the great thing about this knife, and the very best part of this design, is the blade. Um, you can see here that it is a very tall blade, which is very nice, with a tall grind that is a little bit on the hollow side, and so, as a result, even the, the blade stock isn't so thick, but by the time you get down to the edge, it is nice and thin, which is very nice, uh, which means that this knife actually does cut things very reliably. It is a nice knife to cut with, and that's more than can be said for a lot of your big tactical sorts of blades, and so I like that very much, and also the steel is quite good on this blade. You're looking at CTX XHP, which is one of those steels that is absolutely good to go, no concerns whatsoever. And then the blade shape itself is nice. Um, you get an area of flat-ish, we'll talk about that in a bit here, with a little bit of belly, a nice strong point. You know, I love the blade on this guy 100%, and I, I, I really that's a beautiful part of this design. So to me, that is the great. The blade of this knife is a quality cutting tool, 100%. Let's talk about what's bad. Okay, so on the bad side, first off, I got to introduce the elephant in the room with this knife, and that is the price tag. Uh, this is ugly, 100%, and I'll come back to it, but um, the price on this knife is $525. And more than most, I think this review depends very heavily on that price. Because things that might be bad in a knife, you know, if this knife were 180 bucks, this review would be very, very different than it is at 525 Some things that I would probably let slide and say, you know what, it's fine. I'm not willing to let slide on a knife that's really aiming for the upper, upper, upper echelons of production work. I, and so I, I got to put that out there ahead of time, even though we're going to come back to it in the ugly. So, um, but that said, let's get into the bad. First off, on the bad side, it's got some things that bug me a little bit. Um, for instance, it has got a non-committal recurve here. So you can see that there is kind of barely a recurve to the blade. The blade kind of goes back up this way. But the thing is, if you hold it against a, uh, a flat surface, like the scale of this PM2 here, you can just barely see anything. And this recurve is, you know, a matter of like half a millimeter or something. The thing is, that's enough recurve to cause problems if you're sharpening on a bench stone, but it's not enough recurve to give you any functional improvement, or even to give you any aesthetic improvement. So this is just like a, eh, maybe there's a recurve thing. I really, those bug the crap out of me, but whatever. That's a nitpick. Next thing, this is missing a lot of your higher-end niceties. Again, if you're charging 525 bucks for a knife, one would expect you to be going the extra mile in a bunch of different areas, and it isn't really. So for instance, instead of screws on both sides going into the standoff, the screw is going straight through an unthreaded standoff right into the titanium. So if this strips out here, you're going to have yourself a very bad time, and your knife is going to need to go back for repair, and that's not a great thing. Similarly, there is no lock bar insert, leading to some of the uh, the, the other issues we've been feeling here, um, and we'll talk about later. There's no over-travel stop for the lock bar, although the clip kind of functions in that way, or at least provides pressure against it. The uh, standoffs aren't shouldered, and one of the big things that I don't even think is a high-end nicety, but is one of those things you just need to do, is it's not even using real washes. This is using a pair of Teflon washes. Um, and, you know, look, the detent here is good enough that they are able to get past that. The This has a deploy action that is solid, even despite using Teflon, due to the strength of this detent. But the thing is, I, these washes are still worse than phosphor bronze would be. A hundred freaking percent. I mean, this closing action is just kind of disgusting at this kind of price point. And it's really odd to get the thing dialed in. I, and then look at the freaking washes. I mean, the hole punching in those, if you watch the disassembly, was borderline hilarious. I mean, really? Really? For 525 bucks, you can do way better than that. I'm freaking sorry. Um, and so there you go. Next thing. The blade on this guy is 3.6 inches, um, and that is a uh, blade length that's a little bit frustrating to me because you can see here that, well, 
three and a half inches is the line in many, many places, at least in the U.S., and 3.6 inches doesn't win us a whole lot more. I mean, if we compare this to, say, the PM2 blade here, which is 3.5 inches, um, that extra little bit isn't doing anything except potentially getting you arrested. So I generally tend to advocate for makers to either go up to 3.5 inches and stop, or to go past it and keep going a little bit, have a little more fun with it. That bugs me slightly, but that's a nitpick there. Um, another one is that the sharpening choil isn't quite there. And see here, the plunge grind goes slightly past the sharpening choil, and as a result, you get this little area where the grind is thicker. It's it. This is a little detail, but it's a little detail that for 500 bucks they should be getting right. Um, the clip is also on heavy texturing here. Um, as you put this guy into your pocket, you're going to kind of feel a... as it goes up onto the little... Uh, onto each one of these things. And so every time you take this into or out of your pocket, uh, you're going to feel those little ridges sliding because the clip is pushing your pants up against them. It's going to eat your pants after a while. And, well, it's just something that could have been avoided with a flat surface area underneath where the clip touches here. There you go. Next thing. I mean, holy crap. What's the name of this knife again? I, I'm, I'm, I'm losing track of it. I mean, I'm looking at this knife. I have no way of telling who made it or, uh, you know, what, what its name is. Oh, man. I mean, seriously. I, I get that this Wilson Combat is a $275 logo on this knife, but still, holy crap, guys. I think you can calm that down a little bit. You know, make it a little smaller, move it up to this neck of the woods. And same thing on the other side. Just pop that up there and then, you know, okay, put it on the clip or not, whatever. But I, the, 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 the logo on there is just a little bit excessive. And then finally, on the bad side, this guy is pretty huge in the pocket with a very, very huge pocket peck and flip a tab. This guy is going to be pecking on whatever is in your pocket all freaking day long. This is, yeah, so this width of this guy coupled with the pocket pecker on here is a little bit frustrating in the pocket. Not something I love carrying with anything else in the pocket with it. So uh, there you go. That is the, uh, that's the bad here is that it's huge in the pocket with quite the pocket pecker. The logo is really, really big in addition to being really expensive. The clip is sitting on top of an area of heavy texturing, uh, which makes it a little hard. The uh, sharpening choil didn't quite hit the mark there. It's 3.6 inches. It's missing a lot of your higher end niceties, including real washes. And it's got a non-committal recurve, which always a little bit annoying to me. Um, let's talk about what's ugly, because unfortunately there's some ugly here. So, okay, on the ugly side, first off, the lock stick. This knife has been taken apart probably four different times now, and each time I do take it apart, I uh, pop the... Uh, when I pop the blade out, I give it a nice thick coating of Sharpie. I literally just mean a permanent marker, because that can help to knock down the lock stick. So I give the tang of the blade there some Sharpie, and I give the back of the lock bar here, where it touches the tang, a little bit of uh, Sharpie as well. And that helps to keep the lock stick at bay for a little while, but it comes back every damn time. This knife has serious lock stick issues. And, you know... I, it, it drives me a little bit nuts. And part of it is because they're not using a lock bar insert. That's one way to knock it down. But they, they, there are lots of other knives that use just flat titanium interfaces but don't have any stick at all. And for it to be present, the knife this pricey, oh, that's ugly. The other thing that's ugly I keep hitting on is this price. I mean, $524.95 freaking cents. And I gotta be honest, I'm having one of those pawn stars, yeah, sorry, I can't come anywhere near that, but uh, hey, thanks for bringing it in. Moments, I mean, really, seriously, no. I mean, allow me to demonstrate the pricing distribution of this knife. You got like 200 bucks for the object itself. This logo right here costs about 175 bucks, and then this guy, probably 150, because it doesn't have the, the, the full name there. I mean, that's the only way that this knife makes sense. I mean, for 525 bucks, you have your pick of the very best knives in the world. You get some of the greatest small batch production. You can get some very nice custom work at that level. The Chris Reeves Sabenza, the Alamic 247, the, the, the Spyderco Sleash Bowie, all sorts of just high, high-end production and mid-tech stuff. Knives that have solved all of the major problems and have moved into panache and are trying to go the extra mile to perfect every last detail. And for this price to make any sense for this knife, they would have to go the extra mile, to, to go after every last detail, to demonstrate true mastery here, and honestly, they haven't. This just feels really underdone. It feels like a knife that was made quickly. It feels like a knife that's just being made, you know, okay, let's see if I can get a bunch of these out of my shop pretty quickly. And that 
bugs the crap out of me because the end result is a knife that's pretty unimpressive. I mean, you've got the substantial lock stick. You've got missing features. A blade that isn't quite scented. Oh, did I not mention? Uh, either way, the blade's not quite scented. And you're running on Teflon freaking washers with holes that look like they were punched in them by a blind guy at a drill press. I, I, I really... No, not for this price. I mean, don't get me wrong. One should absolutely have respect for Les George's time and work. If these are being made by him in his shop or in his shop, period, you know, yeah, that'll command a bit of a premium, but we also need to have respect for the wallet of knife enthusiasts. Even if this is made in Les George's shop, this price for this knife is hard to swallow, and relative to what you can get at anywhere else, frankly, this just feels like a terrible value. So the ugly to me here is absolutely 100% that price point, which I just cannot see remotely. And that's the ugly. The price and the lock stick is also not a beautiful thing. Let's go into our final conclusion, which I've kind of foreshadowed a little bit here. Look, final conclusions, at some level, I, I love the design of this knife, and I think it's got a lot, a lot of potential here. I mean, it is a nice, EDC-friendly large knife with this tall, thin profile. The blade is a stellar functional tool. I, I love this blade very, very much. The action, the detent specifically on it, is very, very good and helps to overcome some of the other shortcomings. And, I mean, if you were to swap in real washes and fix the lock stick, I think this design could absolutely be a gem. There is a lot, a lot of potential here. And I think it would be even... This this knife, as it is right now on my table, would be pretty easy to recommend as a budget-conscious frame lock, coming in around 200 bucks or so. And I think there, the strength of the design, the detent, and the, you know, the, the freaking blade on this would kind of offset the shortcomings in build qualities, and I think at that kind of price point, it would absolutely be competitive with some of the other knives, uh, knives in the area. But frustratingly, I think the retail price is more than twice what it would have to be to be remotely competitive at this level of finish. And the additional money doesn't seem to be winning you anything thing but the Wilson Combat logo. And to be fair, I don't think the main audience for this knife are actually knife guys. I, instead, I think this is probably aimed at Wilson Combat guys who may want a knife. Maybe they go in, they buy a $3,500 pistol, and, you know, they realize, hey, maybe I'll get a new knife, and the salesman gives them a great deal, and then they walk out happy, the salesman's happy because they've just made a crap ton of money off this. I mean, everyone's freaking happy. And, and so, you know, at that level, I think it could make you happy. If money's not a factor and you're a huge fan, of Wilson Combat or of Les George, you know what? You may enjoy this knife. I'm not saying it's a terrible knife, uh, and it will be a solid tool that serves you well. But the thing is, as a knife guy, oh, I just can't do it because this $525 retail price could buy you not just a better knife, but like a pair of knives, both of which are individually better than this. I mean, you could buy for that price a ZT562CF and a PM2, a Spyderco PM2, both of which are incredible knives. You could buy a, a Sleash Bowie and a 452CF from ZT, both way better. You could buy yourself a Spyderco Delica and a Benchmade Anthem, and you'd have enough money in each of those pairings left over to take your knives out for a nice dinner when you buy them. I, I just, I can't break it even. I feel like I'm hopping on it, but really? <laughs> wow. And so I guess there, there's the conclusion. It is the, is the eagle. It's a nice tool. And I guess for the right price, it could absolutely be a good choice for you. But the thing is, if you're stuck paying retail, I hate to say it, but the eagle is absolutely not up to par. Get it? Golf joke? Either way, I, I hope this has been interesting to you. I, I hope that these go on closeout so a bunch of people can get a great deal on a great knife someday. But, uh, oh, man, that price tag. Anyways, hope this is interesting. Have yourselves a good one. Bye now.